So this question is similar to the one that we just did, apart from it wasn't bisecting. It wasn't so obvious that it was going to be half and half. So in a way, this one's more interesting. We are going to do the same strategy as before. Although it's asking us to do some other things, it looks like it's more confusing. It is still wanting us to find out OX and OX in two different ways. The extra thing that it's told me about this diagram is that to go from O to Q is a third of A. So it's a third of the whole way across. Part A of the question, which is the blue journey, says that OX is some fraction of OC. So lambda here is between 0 and 1. We're trying to say how far along that line does it actually go. But if I want to find out what it is of OC, I better find out what OC actually is. And OC is A plus B. Look on the journey. It's A plus B. So OX is lambda A plus B or lambda A plus lambda B. That's the easy one, OK? The hard one is the red journey. The red journey, they ask us, they tell us that bx is some fraction of bq. bx is some fraction of bq. OK, well, I better work out what bq is. The mumbling while I'm talking is really distracting. bq, to go from b to q, it's going to be minus b plus a third a, which is just what you said, minus b plus a third a. Now, putting that over here, bx is a fraction of minus b plus a third a. So bx is minus mu b plus a third mu a. Now, a few people got to this stage, and they tried to compare the coefficients of bx with ox. Why is that not possible? Because it's not OX. You can only compare things if they're equal to each other. So I can't compare BX and OX. I now have found out what BX is. That's going to help me find out what OX is. Because OX on the red journey is B plus BX. So it is B plus BX. And we've worked out what BX is here. So that's B minus mu B plus one third mu a. Let's just come down a little bit more here. If I simplify this and factorize, let's take the a bit to begin with. I have a third mu a plus, when I factorize this b part, I get one minus mu. <coughs> now I'm going to take this bit here and this bit here and I'm going to compare the coefficients together. Now we're really, really at the final, the final stretch of this. So we can see from here that lambda a and a third mu a come together. So that tells me that lambda is equal to a third mu. That came from comparing the a parts together. We're now going to compare the B parts together. And the B parts together show me lambda is equal to 1 minus mu. So we're going to get a different kind of setup here. Lambda is equal to 1 minus mu. That came from comparing the B coefficients. We have some simultaneous equations. Best way of solving these? Make them equal. Make them equal. They're already a lambda equals. So I can actually just say that a third mu equals 1 minus mu. If you add mu to that side, you get 4 thirds mu equals 1. So mu equals 3 over 4. Using the top one, lambda is a third of that. So lambda is a third of 3 quarters, which is just 1 quarter, solving the simultaneous equations. You also have simultaneous equation solvers on calculators and things, but this is a dead easy one that you can do. We haven't even finished the question. We've determined the value of lambda, but it wants us to know the ratio OX to XC. So let's actually just go up here a second. We've said that mu is 3 quarters and lambda is 1 quarter. Lambda was referring to this thing. So it's telling me this journey is 1 quarter of the whole journey, which means this journey must be 3 quarters. So the last part of the question 
the ratio OX to XC, that's one quarter and that's three quarters. <coughs> Multiplying both of those by four, we get one to three. Out of interest, the mu ratio said that from B to X was three quarters. Interestingly, that bit up there is one quarter as well. Pretty, pretty tricky kind of question, but I, I'm going to ask you for your homework only to do one more question like this and to watch both of these videos again to remind you of it if you can't do it. The reason I like this question is because it doesn't only apply to this specific parallelogram. It would apply to a parallelogram that looked like this, where that was one third of the way along, and that was like this, and that was like this. It would still have that it was split into the same ratio. No matter what the parallel parallelogram looked like, vectors have proven that it will always be like that. Okay? So, 